Those of you that know Come Harry, you'll know that I'm not Richard Northridge. It's a shame that Richard can't be with you today. What I will say about Come Harry is we are doers, we're a sort of can do bunch of people, and Richard Northridge is actually driving one of our collection trucks this morning around Mid Wales collecting food waste. So he, he's been there for a long time, but he's actually still hands on the ground as well. So he's asked me to step in for him today. Some of you will see me in a slightly different guise later on today. Um, I'll do my Mr. Ben impression later on and uh, get changed into something else and talk to you later about food and growing. But I'm here to talk about zero waste today and this is a project that Cum Harry had been running for three years. Um, just come to the end of our pilot project. <coughs> zero waste for us is all about slow recycling and we were set a one year pilot project, can we get a community to reach the government, Welsh Government targets for recycling? That was our remit. The answer is yes. The only way we believe it can be done and can be done effectively is through connecting with the people on the ground, the communities that you are asking to recycle. And that's what we did. We provided a full waste collection service for Prestine and Norton on the edge of Montgomeryshire on behalf of effectively Paris County Council and Welsh Government. Our emphasis was on the people on the ground, so our team of employees and the communities that we were working with, not £100,000 shiny trucks, as you might see in lots of other areas. And in fact, our shiny truck was a milk float and still is a milk float, solar powered milk float as well, so nice and energy efficient. And we literally walked behind that milk float and collected the refuse and the recyclers from the households. While we were doing that at a really nice slow pace, we could talk and engage with the people that we were asking to help us reach these targets. So we will move you stand in front of there yeah. so we can pick you up and yeah. get a big stick, keep me in one place. Um, we recycled 15 streams of recyclate. Powers County Council has just issued their new curbside recycling collection service and they've managed to get that up to 12 strands, which is pretty impressive, much better than their half a dozen or so they were doing before. What we did was gather in that recyclate, we sorted really well at the curbside. If you can imagine a milk float running along at three, four miles an hour, the staff had a real chance to sort through what was in those bins make sure it was going into the right compartments. When it got back to the depot, we could then bulk it up into really clean, valuable recyclates. And a lot of our work was not just about recycling, but actually can we really reduce the amount of waste that people are throwing away? Again, yes we can. You'll see that the top line there is where we started at, um, well, the Wales average of residual waste per tonne 70 kilos, it's dropped to 60 and a bit. Actually in Prestine and Norton, we started at 60, so that was our ballpark figure. End of year three, we got it down to 30 kilos per household, per quarter. It's pretty impressive. So a considerable drop, and that was one of our aims. Why does slow recycling work? As I've said, we're quite a visible presence around that community or where. We were there all day, every day. We only missed one collection service in three years and that was due to too many inches of snow for our poor little electric vehicle to get around. And in fact in the worst of the winter we went out and bought a quad bike and we towed a trailer with a quad bike so we could still collect from every single property in those communities. We collected on bank holiday Mondays. If your collection was a Monday we still collected on a bank holiday. The only days we didn't collect was Christmas and Boxing Day. So we provided a pretty good value service. We changed the ball game a little bit in Wales by introducing a clear bag system. So instead of your black refuse bags that you could hide all of your recyclates in, we introduced a clear bag system. And I believe we were the first ones in Wales to brave it. Thankfully, we actually had very little opposition and very little sort of backlash, if you like, to introducing that because the communities that we were working with really got engaged with us. Monmouthshire have just introduced the same system, 
and have immediately hit real problems um, because they didn't do that community engagement work. And the idea behind a clear bag, we weren't going to be rummaging through everyone's bins, but if people were throwing away loads of stuff that was to us recyclable, we wanted to go and have a bit of a discussion and see how we could help them out. There were opaque bags provided for sort of sanitary type wear, um, medical items and things like that. We weren't trying to pry in people's bins, but it worked for us. Interestingly as well, what we did was residual waste sort. So when we'd collected their rubbish as well, we took that to a different factory and examined it. We were probing around in bin bags to see what could be recycled more. 80% of what was being thrown away could have been recycled. So there are some, we're pretty good with that figures, but actually we could have got so much better. We also work with the community on sharing ideas about how we could improve the service that we were offering them. The recycler that we collected that was worth a valuable amount of money Whenever we sold it, we put it into a community dividend fund. That fund built up over each quarter, and at the end of every six months, the local community had an option to vote which charities in their local community would get a share of that dividend. Each year, we gave back in the region of £10,000 in community dividends to their local charities, so that we could prove that the recyclers, if it was done cleverly, were worth money. And actually, in some instances, we bulked up, let's say glass was the worst one. Prices change daily for glass recyclate. If you try and sell mixed glass, it's worth absolutely nothing. You might be lucky and somebody will come and collect it for free. If you sort it into coloured glass, it becomes worth 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds a tonne. We would daily, almost daily, not quite daily, but look at the figures that recycling companies were offering at us. And if they weren't offering a good deal, we'd just keep it in the warehouse for another month or two until they really wanted it, and then we'd sell it at the best price we could. We talked, as I said, to individuals that perhaps weren't participating in the service as much as we would like to them. And we took the waste out to them. We actually dumped it on the side of corners of where people lived and said, actually, in your community, you can't really see the pictures there. The example there is King's Court. 49 residents live in King's Court. 45 of you are recycling. We literally put it that close to their faces and said, come on, we need you to get better. I don't think there'd be many local authorities that are perhaps brave enough to do that. Um, there may be, I'm not so sure. Community was pretty impressive. Um, and people didn't mind, I'll be really honest. They saw the funny side of it in a way, but actually they could see the, the stronger messages. I was asked to talk about challenges and what next. One of the issues that perhaps we faced. Year one, we were asked to say, can you get it to work? We got Prestine and Norton to 63% of their waste was being recycled. That was still shy of the Welsh Government targets that are going to be introduced next year, I believe. Um, we got some continuation funding to say, can you bump that up a bit? Of course. Let's give it a go, and that's where we, we changed our ball game a little bit. <clears throat> year two, just at the end of year two, we got to 71%. Highest independently audited recycling target in Wales, probably in England and the rest of the UK. Can we get it higher? Yes, we can. Year three, we looked at those residual waste sorts of what was in the rubbish that could still be recycled. One of the biggest things that was in there was nappies. Not a particularly pleasant thing to be looking at in a waste sort, but actually in year three what we did was target people with young families that are using nappies and say actually what can we do about this waste because I'm sure you're all aware of the amount of nappies going to landfill is, is ginormous and actually there are recycling companies now that recycle nappies amazingly. Um, and we started to recycle nappies in Prestine and Knighton. We were having to ship them out of Wales even because there's no recycling <coughs> facility in Wales that I know of. We managed to then get the communities up to 75% recy recycled from their residual waste. Pretty impressive. We believe we're probably the leaders in the whole of the UK and possibly pretty up there 
There is a cost to that, obviously, and the service that we delivered on behalf of Paris County Council and the Welsh Government cost them £173 per household per year to run that service. 200 quid a household. If you look at a shiny new truck that costs £120,000 plus, how many households could you have got that target up to if you put £200 a household? What it has led us to, because we have now lost that contract, that, that's fine. I think Paris's targets when we first started, sorry, Paris's figures for recycling were 38% across Paris. They're in real danger of hitting these um, fines from the Welsh Government. Paris is, is picked up their ball game doing these new curbside sorts. They're now at 46 to 48% recycling. They're still a long way from where they need to be, but they're getting better. We knew that project was coming to an end. It was always a short, short term sort of piecemeal project. What that has led us to do is to create other social enterprises around zero waste. Um, we now operate a full events recycling service. So we go to fairly large scale events. We're doing Hay Festival this year. We do the Royal Welsh, we do the Spring Holders Fair, and we take a small army of pretty much volunteers, people that are brought in on a day rate, and we collect the waste streams from those events. And we sort it to the best of our ability. Ideally, they sort it when they drop it into the correct bins. We then take that away, recycle whatever we can, landfill what we can't, and we'll report back to the event organisers on their performance of that event. What we have the chance then to do is actually talk to thousands, possibly tens of thousands of people at events about waste and what they're doing with it. So that is now a standalone entity under Come Harry, self-financing. We obviously charge the events for running that service. We then started to look at <clears throat> what we have now termed rubbish diet. And that was about a sort of slim your bin option, I suppose. We set up small community groups that would go out and talk to community organisations, many of you are involved in those sorts of things, and we'd sit down with you and say, come on, think about what you're buying. Have a look at the packaging that's going into your bin. Where can you buy something from locally that you don't need to put it in 10 different, like lots of packaging before it gets home, and that sort of thing. And linked from that was the Museum of Bad Design, and that was actually about, when you look at a bin, there is a load of stuff in there that is just poorly designed. And that's then got to go back to the manufacturers and the processors and the packers of those products to say, this is rubbish. You've got to do something about this. These communities can't recycle this because of the way you've packaged it. You've got things mixed together in your packet, um, stuff like that. And that has led now to a small consultancy team of People's Design Lab that is another standalone entity under Cumharry that put through a bid to Nesta's Rubbish Challenge and I'm pleased to say we're down into the finals for both the Museum of Bad Design and the Rubbish Diet. If we pull that off, we get a £50,000, thank you very much, to continue that work at the more senior level of the processors and the packers and the product developers to say, come on, let's change your ball game, not having to put the whole emphasis on the communities. That's it from me.